China just shocked the entire AI industry once again, this time with Baidu's launch of two new AI models, Ernie 4.5 and Ernie X1. They claim Ernie 4.5 outperforms OpenAI's latest GPT-4.5 model while being 99% cheaper to run. And their reasoning model, Ernie X1, reportedly matches DeepSeek R1's performance for half the cost. So the AI price war continues, driving down the cost of intelligence even faster, an exponential trend that was already well underway. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with Baidu's official announcement of Ernie 4.5 and Ernie X1. They state, as a deep thinking reasoning model with multimodal capabilities, Ernie X1 delivers performance on par with DeepSeek R1 at only half the price. Meanwhile, Ernie 4.5 is our latest foundation model and new generation native multimodal model. So Ernie 4.5 is the foundation model and Ernie X1 is the reasoning model. Both are natively multimodal and both are free to use on their official chatbot. Ernie bot. The link will be in the description as per usual, and I believe you'll need a Chinese phone number to sign up. Now, we talked a little bit about pricing, and we'll go more into that later, but first, let's talk about performance. According to Baidu, Ernie 4.5 achieves collaborative optimization through joint modeling of multiple modalities, exhibiting comprehensive improvements in understanding, generation, reasoning, and memory, along with notable enhancements in hallucination prevention, logical reasoning, and coding abilities. So as you can see on the top section of this chart, we have various benchmarks measuring multimodal capabilities. They compare Ernie 4.5 to GBT 4.0 since GBT 4.5 is not yet multimodal. And Ernie 4.5 clearly outperforms it on nearly every benchmark. These benchmarks again measure multimodal capabilities, things like chart and graph comprehension, text extraction from images, math-based visual understanding, and more. Now on the bottom section, we have traditional text-based benchmarks like MMLU Pro, GBT PQA, and GSM 8K, along with several other widely used benchmarks for evaluating AI models. On these benchmarks, Ernie 4.5 performs on par with GPT 4.5, give or take a couple of percentage points. They've also included GPT 4.0 and DeepSeek V3 on this chart, and as you can see, Ernie 4.5 and GPT 4.5 trade wins across different tasks, with DeepSeek V3 also competing closely in some areas. Overall, Ernie 4.5 holds its own against the best models available today, but what truly sets it apart is its cost efficiency. As you can see from this chart, the price of API input tokens for GPT 4.5 is $75 per 1 million tokens, and $150 per 1 million tokens for output. Compare this to Ernie 4.5, which costs just 55 cents per 1 million input tokens, and $2.20 per 1 million output tokens. That is a 99% reduction in cost. Not to mention, you need to buy the $200 per month ChatGPT Pro plan to get full access to GBT 4.5, whereas Baidu's Ernie 4.5 is completely free. Now, in Baidu's official announcement post on X, they included a link to this website, which briefly outlines the advancements that made this level of performance and cost efficiency possible. I'll be honest, I'm not super familiar with some of the technical terms they use, so if anyone watching has insights on these developments, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. They state, Baidu's latest foundation model and native multimodal model, Ernie 4.5, outperforms GBT 4.5 in multiple benchmarks while priced at just 1% of GBT 4.5. The significant enhancements in Ernie 4.5's capabilities are attributed to several key technologies, including flash mask dynamic attention masking, heterogeneous multimodal mixture of experts, spatio-temporal representation compression, knowledge-centric training data construction, self-feedback enhanced post-training. So yeah, some pretty technical stuff, and again, I'm not exactly sure what these mean. But at the end of the day, these advancements seem to be what's allowing Baidu to deliver competitive performance at a fraction of the cost. Even their reasoning model, Ernie X1, is about half the cost of DeepSeek R1, both for input and output tokens. While they don't actually provide benchmarks for this model, they mentioned in the beginning that it performs on par with DeepSeek R1 while being half the cost. So we're seeing more and more of these extremely cheap yet high performing models coming out of China. We had DeepSeek R1, which arguably kicked off this whole AI price war. Then came Alibaba's QWQ32B, which managed to outperform DeepSeek R1 despite being 20 times its size. 
And now we have Baidu's Ernie 4.5 and Ernie X1, which once again pushed the boundaries even further. Baidu also mentioned that they plan to open source these models by June 30th of this year. Not surprising given the current trend of Chinese AI companies open sourcing their models shortly after release. Now, this rapid push from China isn't just about cheaper AI models. It's about dominance in the global AI race. This is something that even major figures like Elon Musk have been warning about for a while now. Here's a clip from a recent interview of Musk talking about exactly that. Now, I guess my view, we're in a race to, to win AI. We're in a race with China. And my view is if they're going to be killer robots, I'd rather they be American killer robots than Chinese. How likely are we winning right now? Is America winning right now? And how likely is America to win the race for AI vis-a-vis -vis China or anyone else? For the next few years, I think America is likely to win. Uh, then it will be a function of who controls the AI chip uh, fabrication. The factories that make the AI chips, who controls them? If they are controlled, if more of them are controlled by China, then China will win. More of the factories that are making the AI chips, you, you think that will determine it? Yes. And how are we doing versus China on that front? Well, right now, uh, almost all the advanced AI chip uh, factories, they call them fabs, um, are in Taiwan. And what if China invades Taiwan? 69 miles away from Yeah, if, uh, what, what happens if China, <laughs> yeah. if China invades Taiwan, what happens to the world? Well, if they were to invade in the near term, uh, the world would be cut off from uh, advanced AI chips. And One, currently 100% of advanced AI chips are made in Taiwan. How fast could we put that online in America and how important is that for national security? I think it's essential for national security uh, and we're not doing enough. So these next few years are absolutely crucial. If the U.S. wants to maintain its lead in AI, it needs to invest heavily in infrastructure now. We're already seeing massive projects underway, like OpenAI's $500 billion project Stargate, but the competition isn't slowing down. China is scaling up rapidly, pushing out cheaper, high-performing models, and even open-sourcing them, making advanced AI more accessible worldwide. At this pace, China is well-positioned to take the lead in the long run, thanks to its immense capacity for energy production and large-scale AI deployment. And then there's even China's manufacturing advantage. They can mass-produce AI-powered humanoid robots at scale like no one else. In fact, they may already be ahead on this front. Just recently, Chinese company Engine AI showcased their humanoid robot pulling off an entire dance routine. Here's their PM01 robot recreating the iconic Axe Gang dance scene from the 2004 movie Kung Fu Hustle. Check this out. So this is extremely impressive. It shows just how fast humanoid robots are advancing, and this is really only just the beginning. I think it's honestly unclear who will come out on top in this AI race. China certainly has its own set of advantages, a massive population, immense infrastructure and manufacturing capacity, and the ability to make AI models more cost-efficient and widely accessible. Meanwhile, the US still leads in cutting-edge research, talent, investment, and AI chip development. But with China rapidly closing the gap, the balance of power in AI is shifting faster than ever. What's clear is that this race is far from over, and the next few years will determine who dominates the future of AI. Anyways, that's all for today's video. If you found this interesting, be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments, who do you think will win the AI race in the end?